Hey everybody, it's me for Girly here and welcome back to episode two of the brand new Nanolux LED and Blue Magic Nutrients test run. I appreciate you guys joining me for another episode here. Last episode uh, was a great premiere. I really got, uh, appreciate you guys joining me on YouTube. Um, a lot of comments after too and you guys definitely should go back and check them out because several of you guys went in and actually did the math on the efficiency of this LED uh, bar and that was pretty cool to see I really appreciate you guys doing that and uh, you know participating it really helps me out helps me understand and especially all those guys like me that are new to LED um, you guys started talking about DLI and stuff and I've heard about a talk before but really hadn't even considered that um, for this light and uh, it's definitely something that's quite important so maybe we'll talk a little bit more in terms of tech down the road but today we're gonna focus on nutrients Shout out to Blue Magic Nutrients. You can check them out at bluemagicnutrients.com. We are testing their full line of nutrients in this run. Um, I don't think I'm gonna use any additives, and if I do, I'll let you know, but if, if I did, it'd be something like Mammoth P, which I'm actually out of, so I don't know that I'll be getting more for that, or maybe like Budswell Bagrano, which I actually haven't used in a couple runs, but uh, I've considered adding it just because of the recommendations that have been set forth for me. Um, you can find their feeding schedule at bluemagicnutrients.com. You can also find it at my website for girly.com slash bluemagicnutrients, all one word. And uh, we'll have the, the graphic on there that you guys will see in this video, plus um, a downloadable PDF. And I haven't put it on there as of filming of this video, but hopefully by the time I get this uploaded, you guys will have my actual feeding chart on there as well because I am changing it up just a little bit not much but a little bit and uh, again that was just based on recommendations for this setting if you will all right so I actually did film this already um, I went ahead and mixed all these nutrients on that day one video let's go ahead and I already knocked one over but um, a couple of these are empty because we've already filled up our reses and we've been feeding. And so while it does suck that uh, <laughs> while I filmed it, uh, about five minutes into it or so, I realized that my SD card on my phone got full. And so, yeah, I guess the majority of the mixing of the nutrients, if not all of it, was just not even being filmed. So that was a bummer, but the good news is uh, I'm actually filming on a brand new camera right now. So you guys let me know in terms of the camera quality um, how it looks compared to the last video uh, because this is the new DJI Pocket 2. Uh, my wife just got it for me for my birthday and so I'm pretty excited to uh, give it a try, test run here. I've been playing around with the settings a little bit but this is actually the first time I've hit the record button so we'll see. <laughs> you guys let me know in the comments below. But like I said, we jumped ahead a little bit here. This is now longer day one. We're actually at day six. Um, I just added this Scrog support. You guys will remember I had it kind of just tied into the walls with uh, our uh, wire tie, but I really all I did, let's just flip it around here. I just took these T's, I believe this is inch, no, this is three quarter inch PVC. I just took these T's, just put one screw through it into the wall, and then attached a couple pieces together, cut to length so it's not bending out too much. You'll see a little bend to it. Um, but it's pretty tight and it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, and it's gonna hold the scrog. Now, I would love this to be a little more taut, but I think it's, I think it's gonna work well enough. Um, and with these bars here, I don't have anything coming across my walkways here on either side. Um, and while this is pretty tight over here to get through, I'll be honest, I had a struggle. <laughs> so I'm a big dude, but over here, the walkway is not bad at all. And just to get around that corner, I'll, I usually just kind of move that heater out of the way. Otherwise, it's usually a little bit more under the tables there. The scrog net has been installed and supported, and uh, hopefully we won't have to deal with that anymore. Um, now, I do want to address that calcium issue that I was experiencing. I, I think I'm mostly past it. Now, I say mostly because I, there, is, there is some signs the new growth looks a little better, but we're really not there yet. Um, I had some recommendations that maybe it was just a matter of actually upping the 
PPMs or the EC of the nutrient solution. Um, but I, I don't know. It's not like I'm blasting this light. You know, I think we're still rocking at 40 maybe. I think it's 40 still. I thought about bumping it up in 45. I'm not sure if I did. We'll have to check. But um, until I get that issue taken care of, I want to make sure I'm not really just overdoing it. Now, the plants themselves, they look pretty good. I mean, you'll see some of them are praying. Let's try the zoom effect here. We got, we got some that are sort of praying here. Yesterday, pretty much the whole room was when I came in here. Um, but right now, I mean, they're, they're, they're reaching for the light. Um, they're a little light green, so I'm gonna, still gonna have to address it like I said. But what I did do over, not today, but uh, I guess day four and five, I took some Botanicare CalMag Plus, and I know it's not Blue Magic Nutrients, but I didn't want to use the SoCal Storm I had because you guys will see, I, I have a very strict amount of nutrients here for this run. And we calculated exactly how much I'm gonna need for these 40 gallon reses over a, basically a nine week run. And I guess that includes flush. And uh, I didn't want to be left without. So what I did is about a half hour before the lights came on, maybe 20 minutes, uh, on day four and day five, I mixed up Botanicare Plus, CalMag Plus, and a sprayer at five milliliters per gallon. And I basically just filled it up with one gallon and put five milliliters in it, shook it up, and sprayed these plants. I didn't use the whole gallon, I wasn't even close to it. Um, and that same res was used both days. So, you know, whether or not you should mix it every day, yes, probably, but um, I had so much left over that I just used it between the two days, still didn't use the full gallon, but gave them a nice top and side spray with it. Um, I tried to hit basically all the tops of the leaves, didn't hit really the undersides at all, like you would with uh, some of your IPM sprays, but I hit a foliar spray according to the instructions on the Botanicare website for CalMag Plus, and I think that is helping a bit. Now, I didn't do it today, just because I wanted to see the effects after two days. It's not really something I want to be doing every single day, but I think I probably will do it a couple more times before I'm satisfied with the health of these plants. So, in terms of plant health, we're getting there. We're getting there. I mean, they look good, but they're not perfect, far from that. Um, there is a chance that because they got on this new newt schedule for Blue Magic Nutrients that that has helped as well. Uh, again, I, I didn't like double dose anything in that. I just kind of went on the high end of the SoCal storm. Um, and well, we're going to be getting to that soon here, but I was on those house and garden nutrient schedule that I use for veg and flower. And you know, it's got some other additives in there like the Botanicare CalMag Plus. Um, but that just was not, was not thrive. These plants were not thriving once I moved them under the LED because, because of that schedule. And I really think it's just a calcium issue, quite frankly. All right, so all this talk about nutrients. Let's talk about Blue Magic Nutrients and what I mixed up in terms of the reses. <laughs> Okay, so I'll go ahead and pull out our feeding schedule here. You can just pause it on this if you need to go ahead and screenshot that or whatever. Again, this is available at bluemagicnutrients.com, also at fergroli.com. Uh, those links will be in the description below. So on the far right here, you'll see that I've added up what we're going to need for this full run. You see it's over 5,000 or over five liters, I should say, or 5,000 milliliters of both the A and B base nutrient as well as the King Terp, and as low as 400 milliliters for strong, which is their silica. So essentially what I'm gonna be doing, as my fans blow that around, is I'm gonna be running, running this right in the middle. <laughs> there we go. Basically right in the middle. So for week one, I, I filled my reses, my 40 gallon reses, with 13 milliliters per gallon of Bullseye A, which is this right here. 
and 13 milliliters per gallon of bullseye B, our part B nutrient, which is this right here. Now that's your A and B. Um, these are, all these nutrients are gonna be similar to you no spill guys, um, just in terms of how they run. And you'll, you'll kind of see why. I feel like the A and B is more of like your, probably your mills. Um, this is a you know, higher dosage than I'm used to, and I'm not running, uh, I've never ran mills, but I'm, I'm used to like somewhere like the four, as, as low as four up to maybe like, I don't know, eight, but thir you know, 12 to 14 milliliters per gallon is, I guess what you consider high. Now the good news is these are listed at one quart or 948 milliliters per bottle. Every single bottle, you know, these included, um, that I've opened and dumped so far has had more than a thousand milliliters in it. So a full liter plus, which is good because some of these require, like for example, our um, bullseye A and B for week one at 13 milliliters per gallon, that's 520 milliliters total. So I actually was able to get there, whereas I didn't think I was going to because well, it says 948 milliliters, right? 520 uh, between two reses is 1,040. So we actually got about 100 milliliters more out of that bottle. Now, I'm not gonna say every bottle's gonna be like that, but these ones were, which is pretty sweet. <laughs> more bang for your buck, I, will, I, I guess I should say. So Wild Roots, that's your roots, uh, your rooting su uh, supplement. Um, I ran this right down the center again at nine milliliters per gallon. Go ahead and pull that label up for you. 023 NPK and this says um, once per week during veg and then until week four of bloom so you'll see that gets cut out here in a couple weeks and then for King Terp I ran that at 15 milliliters per gallon I think that comes out to 600 milliliters per 40 gallon res um, and you'll see that gets bumped up in later weeks and honestly, like King Terp, it just reminds me of Terpinator. It's a zero, zero, 001. And you guys know I'm all about those Terps. So I am going to use this, uh, <laughs> I guess not to the fullest extent, just because I'm not running anything at max, but um, I am, I am going to rely on that to boost our Terps this run. And we'll see. I haven't used Terpinator in a long time. I'll be quite honest with you. All right, so strong. This is one of the ones, this is our silica supplement. Potassium silicate, 005, so 5% soluble potash. Um, I'm, because I'm running flood and drain, I'm going to avoid running a silica in my flood and drain system. So not only that, but I'm actually going to run this every other week at the recommended dosage. So basically, if you're looking at this, I'm not running any this week. I'm going to run it next week, take a week off, run it the next week, take a week off, and so on. Um, and I'll probably cut it out here this last couple of weeks as well. And the reason being is flood and drain sometimes doesn't like to run silica products that well. Um, you know, silica is definitely something you want to use in veg where it's a little bit more manageable to feed. Um, but it can throw your pH off among other things. And I'm, I'm gonna try top feeding this. So essentially what I'm gonna do is when I mix my reses, I'm gonna take probably a five gallon bucket out of the reses, mix my silica at the probably two milliliters per gallon rate, and then I'm gonna top feed the plants that day. So it'll have a fresh batch of nutrients. The reses won't be getting silica, but the top feed for the day will have that strong supplement in there. All right, so next one is SoCal Storm. This is an important one, guys, because of the calcium issues I'm having. Um, so this is your 200 calcium magnesium supplement. You see the nitrogen content at two, um, total nitrogen. You got calcium at 3.2%, which is pretty good. I really should go grab that Botanica Calmag and see what these numbers are on that. But 3.2% as far as I recall is pretty solid numbers and then the magnesium at 1.2 percent so i'm not top feeding this or foliar feeding this rather i'm just putting this right in the res and then bam bam i don't have the bottle here because we're not going to be using that for a couple weeks 
We'll talk more about it then, but I'm gonna be running very low dose of Bam Bam because that is your, essentially a hardener, if you will, um, similar to, uh, I guess I would, in this line of nutrients, I guess I would put it next to like your top shooter or your shooting powder from, uh, from House and Garden. And you just gotta be careful with that stuff sometimes. So I'm gonna be running that super low dosage and then let's go ahead and pull this larger bottle as we're getting into these bigger bottles here. Um, I love this label, this cracks me up. The PK Cash and this, this blue hand here. So payback, makes sense, right? Get your money back. This is your Bloom Booster, your Flower Enhancer, whatever you wanna call it. 2-2015, that's pretty solid. Let's get the label up over here. So once per week or every other feeding throughout the entire flowering stage of plant growth, uh, I will be running this essentially every feeding, but I'm staying away from the aggressive feedings. We saw how that has gone in the past with other nutrients. So we're gonna be running this at 120 milliliters, 120 milliliters per gallon, or per reservoir rather, so three milliliters per gallon these first two weeks. And then it bumps up, or rather bumps down, actually. So you see it goes down, and at week three, we'll be running it only at 60 milliliters per reservoir. And then it goes up and way up, and it kind of maintains. So really targeting when the, the nug meat, if you will, production happens. But since we're running fun drain, this is essentially gonna go with every feeding or we're gonna go with that lighter schedule. All right, so one thing I do wanna talk about is these bottle sizes. You'll see that you know, these A and B are empty because like I said, I use the whole thing. Strong, I haven't even opened yet. SoCal Storms, mostly empty. King Terps, totally gone. Wild Roots, mostly gone. This is gonna last us the whole, the whole cycle, but they have everything from those one liter bottles, which I think is their smallest, to I think it's like, oh God, I don't, it's gotta be at least 10 gallons, maybe 20 gallon, just giant jugs of them, maybe even bigger, I'm not sure. But I mean, whether you're a home grower or commercial scale grower, they've got the bottle size for you, let me tell you. Um, I Again, they sent me essentially exactly what I need for this whole cycle. So that's why I have some of these smaller bottles, which is kind of nice because, you know, if I just fill them up, and cut them in half, that's essentially, you know, the one res, or at least for this week, looks like pretty much all the way through almost for the A and B. Um, but I do have a bunch of big jugs, and I think the biggest ones I have are two and a half gallon. So they got one liter, one gallon, two and a half gallon, five gallon, I think 10 gallon, maybe 20 gallon. Um, you know, kind of whatever you're looking for, really. So in terms of where to find this stuff, if you go to bluemagicnutrients.com, I think at the top, or you know, in their menu, it's, I think it just says where to buy. Um, and you can click that link in the description below. But this is available at several different Michigan stores right now. I don't know if it's really in stores outside, outside of Michigan yet. I mean, by the time you're watching this, who knows? I would just, I guess, just click on their website and find out. Um, maybe you can run to the store and grab some today, you know. But you can buy it online through their vendors, or at least some of their vendors as well. So you can order it. Um, I don't know if we're gonna do any kind of discount code or anything yet, um, but you know, I, I would I would give Frigoli a try, why not, you know what I mean? Maybe we'll get one set up. So at the time of this video, we haven't set one up, I guess, but uh, definitely possible. Otherwise, just give that Google a search. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of just never buying things online without a discount code. It's so easy to just find one so quick. <laughs> Even if it's like 5% or free shipping, it always helps, especially with shipping uh, nutrients. That can get expensive, so maybe they, maybe we'll work in some sort of free shipping discount or something. All right, in any case, um, that was the Blue Magic Nutrients feeding schedule for this week. Um, these are 40 gallon reservoirs. And one thing about 40 gallon reservoirs is they tend to last longer than seven days. They last more like 10 days, depending on the week, as they'll drink a lot faster some weeks than others. 
Um, right now, they're pretty much getting fed every other day, um, but they are getting well saturated. It's not just like a quick, quick little, uh, you know, wicking action. It's 15 minutes of, you know, wicking action, if you will. So Coco is really good at that. Someone asked in the last video what media I'm using. This is all Mother Earth Cocoa. Um, and you can see it has the added perlite, which I assume will be a benefit um, for flood and drain. Um, you know, more aeration and everything. But I don't typically use it, to be honest. So. I typically stick with the just regular Mother Earth cocoa. Uh, when I transplanted these plants, that's what was available, so that's what I used. Um, but yeah, it's Mother Earth cocoa, so I've been using that for a long, 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 long time. You also see some of these friends running around. Uh, as part of my IPM, uh, I added uh, maybe 200, 250 or so ladybugs. Uh, they're good for taking out spider mites, aphids, stuff like that. Um, this is really just a preventative, guys. Um, and it will probably be the only time they get added. I know some people freak out the second you see bugs. Uh, but I, I think it's a beneficial thing. And honestly, if you see them like all out mating and uh, especially if you spot their eggs, that's when you know you have a problem that you can't see with the naked eye because if they're breeding in your flowering room or your veg room for that matter, that probably means uh, that there's food for them to eat. <laughs> so one of the reasons I like putting ladybugs in here in my grow rooms, and I usually do it like every other month at this point, um, it really lets me know uh, in a couple weeks if you know all the ladybugs are gone or there's only a couple hanging out at that point, uh, you know, there's really no no issues because otherwise they'd be hanging out and breeding and uh, You'd get a couple generations of them possibly um, So that's one of my methods for IPM. We'll talk probably more about IPM down the road uh, It really hasn't changed much in years in terms of what I'm doing or what I'm using uh, ladybugs predator mites method one um, Zero tall every once in a while I guess just to, you know, for IPM potential, or for PM potential rather. Uh, but I haven't sprayed that in a few weeks at least. Probably more than a month now. So again, that's a whole nother discussion. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys want to hear in terms of this episode and the coming weeks, what kind of content you'd like to see. I know I've kind of been doing my work in here before and after the videos and uh, just kind of talking and filming as we go. In the past, I've kind of showed some of the work, um, but I, I feel like that's kind of rudimentary and we've just gone over it. I'd really like to focus on the quality and production of a strain that I've been running for years now uh, under totally new lighting conditions. Um, one thing I haven't done yet, but I'm going to do probably pretty soon, is get a CO2 tank and regulator and controller so that I can hook it up, probably just like put it in the corner, maybe even that back corner, wire up uh, some nozzles to the fans just so we're spraying it on the plants uh, and have a 50 pound tank just running CO2 gas connected to the Trollmaster controller, probably run it around 1400 PPMs or so. What do you guys think about that? Um, of course not running it at night times, they don't use it, but just making sure we got some daytime CO2 in here. I thought about doing a burner. I think I talked about that in the last video maybe. Um, but I am a little concerned that that could be too much heat. And the added moisture, well the added moisture would be probably even more of a problem come mid to late flower. So I think the gas is probably a better bet for this. Um, I talked a little bit to Nutrient Shootouts about that, shout out to him. Um, and I think, yeah, I think I'm going to put a burner in the other room just because I have a giant dehumidifier in there, that Quest 185. But I'm not going to rely on this ideal air, portable air conditioner up here for too much of my dehumidification. Um, I'm sure it will be some, but we'll see. In any case, guys, shout out to Blue Magic Nutrients. I really appreciate your support, guys. Go check them out. Um, find me at Fergroli.com. We've got 
t-shirts on there. They're, at this point, there's a couple hoodies left. Those hockey hoodies, they're freaking stupid comfortable. And uh, they got like the, the big laces up top, which I love that style. But I only got a couple of them left, so if you guys are interested in picking one up, make sure you go on there. Everything's free shipping at this point. And uh, we do have some shirts. I'm wearing one right now. Oh yeah, Clementine, you know. This whole room in here except one is Clementine. Got one lime skunk there. Right in the center, sort of. So, Fergoli.com on Instagram, at Fergoli. Make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't already. Get that thumbs up. I appreciate your support, everyone. Comment below. And until next time, good luck and grow big.